It's no secret that the new graphics cards from Nvidia are going to need a new power cable or new power adapter. I mean, it's quite a drastic move from the green team, but is it really gonna affect you? Well, the straight answer is yes, no, and well, maybe. So let's uh, take a closer look. Let's do this. So the new Nvidia RTX 3000 series graphics cards are almost here. We haven't actually got that much longer to wait for it. Now, while the 2000 series is still, well, pretty clever and can still pretty much take anything you throw at it, it seems like the 3000 series is about to take it to school. I mean, just taking a look at the RTX 3000 figures that Nvidia have already released and comparing them against, let's say, the 2080 Ti, the current flagship from Nvidia at the time of filming this, it seems that it's going to offer everything that the 2080 Ti has to offer. Well, we have a little bit more on top and for, well, frankly, a lot less money. And while this is going to affect a lot of people, especially if you've recently gone out and bought a 2000 series graphics card, like a 2080 Ti, you're probably gonna be wondering, was it all really worth it? Or did I just waste a huge amount of money? Now, when it comes to any figures that come from any brand, we have to remember to take it with a little bit of, let's say a pinch of salt. They try and perhaps show the games that they know it's going to be favorable in, the scenario that they know it's going to be favorable in, and so forth. Yes, there was some videos being released by the likes of Digital Foundry, but they were pretty strict with what games they could run it on as adhered to by Nvidia. Now, this doesn't sort of necessarily go to say that the 3000 series is going to be terrible. From what we know, it seems that, at least on paper, it's going to completely outshine the competition which is quite funny because Nvidia's biggest competition at the moment is, well, it's Nvidia. So where does it all come down to when you're actually looking at buying one of these new 3000 series graphics cards? Well, on the face of it, it does look like, well, the value for money aspect is pretty, well, it's pretty drastic in the grand scheme of things. I mean, when you look at the 2080 Ti and what that was retailing for when it came out for at launch, and even what it's retailing for now, it really was a wallet busting kind of graphics card. And not just with the 2080 Ti, looking down at the 2080 Super and even further down the stack. Whereas now we're looking at 2080 Ti kind of performance, well, for a lot, lot, lot less money. But does the cost of buying one of these graphics cards really stop there? Obviously there has been a lot of rumors going around about the 12 pin power connector and that has now been confirmed by Nvidia. We were actually on a call with them the other day and they sort of talked about the connector a little bit, but they didn't really go into too much detail. But does that mean that if you have a generic power supply, and I'm not saying these are generic, these are pretty much the creme de la creme with the Corsair AX1600i and the ASUS ROG Thor 1200 watt Platinum. But does it mean that these are now obsolete? Are we gonna go have to go out and buy a new power supply with a new connector? Or what really is the situation with it? Is it going to cost me more money? And that's maybe why these graphics cards I don't know, maybe cost a little bit less because there's hidden costs involved. It's like buying a car. Well, the truth behind it is, as I mentioned at the start of this video, yes, no, and maybe. So if you are buying a Founders Edition graphics card, yes, you are gonna find it has got this 12 pin connector, but Nvidia have got you sorted there. They've actually decided to bundle in the 12 pin power connector or adapter that will simply plug into your existing power supply and will work flawlessly with these new graphics cards. Now it is worth noting that the community doesn't really react that well to new standards or new connectors. So it's very interesting that Nvidia have decided to take this bold move. But from the call that we was on the other day, it seems like there's very good reasoning as to why they've done that. They've been able to shrink down the PCB, which allows for a new cooling solution on this type of graphics card. And that consequently meant readjusting and well, frankly moving where the power connectors were. And the only way of doing it was a 12 pin connector and taking it from this orientation and taking it and putting it vertically. Because I was inverted. So what will this connector look like? Well, essentially it will be like a Y splitter cable. We've seen it with uh, fans before. We've seen it with even taking existing power supply connectors to your graphics card using a Y splitter cable. So nothing really new or out of the ordinary there. Essentially what it does is takes two six pin connectors and bundles it into a single 12 pin connector. How that's gonna look for cable management though is something that we put to Nvidia and they said that from their own internal testing, it seems like everything is A-OK. -okay. Me, well, I'm not too sure. Just look at where that graphics card is gonna be in your system, where that connector is, and are you really gonna be able to orientate a cable, especially if you're using custom braided cables from the likes of To The Wire Mods, Simple Sleeving, or any other brand out there who offers that particular service. 
So what does it mean if you're not buying a Founders Edition card? Well, frankly, nothing really changes. Uh, from the looks of things, we've seen a lot of custom AIC or AIB cards coming out from the likes of MSI, Azus, Gigabyte, Palette, and so many more. And it seems like they're actually opting to go with the existing connector. Maybe that's down to the fact that they aren't going to be using, for the most part, the reference PCB design. Instead, they're gonna go for something much beefier, much chunkier, and consequently with a larger cooler on it. So therefore, they're gonna to opt to go with the existing eight and six, or eight and eight, or six and six, depending on what model you're buying, instead of going with this new standard of the 12 pin connector that we're gonna see on the Founders Edition cards. So while at the moment it doesn't seem like you actually really need to go out and buy a new power supply unless your one is underperforming based on the TGP figures that Nvidia have already put out there, it does actually seem that a lot of manufacturers are bringing out new power supplies too, kind of future-proof themselves for this connector. Maybe it's something that's gonna be adopted later on down the line in further cards, maybe not just from Nvidia, but potentially from AMD and Intel as well. Because again, Nvidia did confirm to us on this call that it's kind of an open standard. They're not restricting it purely to Nvidia-based graphics cards. So maybe Big Navi is going to include this and well, yeah, that could be really, really interesting. So on top of that, the brands who do decide to go with this 12 pin connector, they are future proofing themselves with their own power supplies. We've actually had reports of MSI releasing new power supplies in a variety of different wattages, ranging depending on if you're going with a 3070, which obviously doesn't require as much power as say the oh so powerful 3090 that's gonna be uh, sort of coming out in the next couple of days. Gigabyte are another one who want to sort of make themselves a little bit more future-proof ready and are opting to go with this 12 pin connector on their new range of power supplies, which again will come in a variety of different sort of wattages depending on what graphics card you're deciding to plump for. Now with all of the graphics cards coming out, it does seem like the 3090 is the only one that's offering up an SLI solution through NVLink. So for those who aren't content with the $1,500 mammoth graphics cards performance and its huge amount of memory, you are gonna be able to put two of them together for some pretty extreme stuff. I mean, Flight Sim is gonna look amazing on that, right? But what's to sort of say about these power supplies and the 12 pin connectors if you are running two of these 3090s in MV Link? Is there gonna be enough juice and enough power and especially enough connectors for two graphics cards featuring two 12 pin connectors? If all of this sounds a little bit confusing to you, fret not. All you have to do is look at your power supply box and if there's a lovely sticker on it that says made for Ampere, then well, you're pretty much covered. Now, one thing that does baffle me is I can sort of see maybe the reason why Nvidia decided to make this move by making the PCB smaller and really being lost with options as to where they can go with it and what orientation they need to put it in. But surely they could have made the PCB just that little bit bigger and stuck with an existing connector. I mean, I'm all for one where Molex transferred over to SATA because Molex is the work of the devil, but was this really needed? I mean, was there really that much of a problem with the eight pin and the six pin connectors that it needed some kind of evolutionary step? SATA from Molex, definitely. It's also worth noting that with say a 2080 Ti, it has two eight pin connectors that can both deliver 150 watts each. So that's 300 watts. Then the PCI Express slot itself, 375 watts. The new graphics cards, the 3090, really the TGP on it is only 350 watts. So they could have decided to stick with them connectors as well as the supplementary power from the PCI expansion slot and got everything that would have covered it and another 25 watts on top of it. Maybe there's more reasoning behind it. Only Nvidia know. Now, again, to sort of get rid of some of the confusion, this doesn't mean that because the graphics card is uh, 350 watt TGP or TDP or power limit, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't mean that you can run it off of a 350 watt power supply. Nvidia have already put their own figures out there as to what they believe an average system is going to be for a 3090, a 3080 and a 3070. But you do have to remember this is for an average based system. If you're gonna be running a case like a Fractal Define uh, with its mass amounts of hard drive space and really sort of populating that to the max, then yes, you're gonna be using a little bit more power than the average consumer. So I would take them figures and just, I don't know, be a little bit diplomatic with it and maybe go that little bit above and beyond. If not, you know, I mean, that's going to give you the room for future proofing if you wanted to upgrade at a later date. I mean, who's really happy about upgrading every single time a new product comes out? Well, I know some people are, but still. It's also worth noting that with the custom AIB or AIC cards, whatever you want to call them, there may even be higher power limits than that. You have to remember with these Founders Edition cards that we have seen the figures for, it's incorporating two fans, one on the front and one on the rear. Whereas a lot of these cards coming out are going to have a triple fan design. There's going to be RGB. Now, I'm not saying RGB takes up a lot of power, but all of this stuff coupled together is definitely going to sort of take that power limit 
a little bit above and kind of beyond its comfortable levels. So maybe we're going to see even higher limits as these cards sort of get released and more specs come, become available for them. So what does this really mean for you guys out there? Well, frankly, do you need to upgrade your power supply? Probably not, unless you're really running something that is maybe a little bit old. And frankly, you're at that point where you really do want to upgrade your power supply. Or maybe you're running a 550 watt power supply and Nvidia are recommending a 650. Personally, I'd probably be looking at a 750. And for the cards where it's recommending a 750, I'd ideally be wanting to go for an 850 watt and probably in a gold rating, purely because the price difference between a gold power supply and a bronze power supply, well, there really isn't that much in it anymore. And I honestly feel that you'd be getting a lot more for your money, mainly by going to an 850 watt power supply. Most of them are gold rated as opposed to bronze, and you end up getting two EPS connectors for your motherboard. So let's have a little quick recap. Basically, Nvidia are releasing new graphics cards, which will have a single vertical 12 pin power connector in there, but don't fret because the 12 pin adapter cable or connector is going to be included inside the box. On top of that, if you are in the market for a new power supply, it's definitely worth considering some of the options that I've already spoke about from the likes of MSI and Gigabyte because they are going to have this 12 pin connector already on there, which may or may not actually be the industry standard in the near future. Other than that, I think you're going to be okay. So it's one of the most common questions that we've had asked in the last sort of, you know, couple of days. And I really wanted to address it and just try and make a bit more of an understanding to it, because I think too many people are fretting that they're not going to be able to run these new graphics cards on their existing power supply. For the most part, for the majority of people out there, especially on the enthusiast level, it's okay. You're going to be fine. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do. And hopefully it's given you a little bit of a better understanding as to kind of what's going on. Obviously, as I mentioned, not everyone's going to have a 1600 watt or a 1200 watt power supply, platinum rated, titanium rated, but it's all going to be okay in the end. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye bye.